Hey there everybody, Milk Knight here, and welcome to the next part of Resident Evil Village, or 8. We're going to be carrying on from where we left off. We ended up um, meeting Chris, and he told us that the big plot twist with uh, Miranda slash Mia. And he had like this contraption left up that we're going to be using in this part. Looks really fun actually. Looks like something from Dawn of the Dead. So, we've got some messages on this laptop to Hound Wolf Squad. Sweep of the factory is complete. No proof of any connection with the organization. Yes, this just wasn't our lucky day. I did manage to get my hands on a number of documents disclosing some of Miranda's experiments which support our previous theories. She seems to have infected herself with the muta mutamocyte, which has granted her a number of abilities, including mimicry. She can control her cells and transform herself to look like anyone or anything. So she's a bit like um, Alex Mercer from Prototype a little bit, who was able to like take other people's DNA and mimic. Good games, uh, the Prototype games were. She disguised herself as Mia and infiltrated the Winters' home. Her objective was clearly to kidnap Rose. Maybe she thought she could control Rose easier if she looked like her mom. When we attacked, it put a little damper on her plans, so she mimicked a corpse. She then revived herself in transport truck, uh, killed everyone on board and took off with Rose. Things didn't go the way she had originally planned, but in the end she still got what she wanted. Until now. It's time to rendezvous and blow this place sky high. This might turn into a fight with Heisenberg. But I think I found something useful. He left one of his little toys laying around. And it's even made from metal polymer composite, composites, which he can't control. Time to turn the tables alpha. <laughs> so... Why would he leave that lying around if he can't control it? That's interesting. Because he has the ability to, like, control metal or whatever. And apparently this can't be controlled, and he left it laying around. Is there anything else in this room, actually, whilst I'm here? First aid, we're definitely going to need that. A sniper rifle. Uh, ammunition. It's a pity the Duke is like not chilling near here. Nope, don't see anything else. Okay, let's uh, jump on board, I guess. Speaking of which, is there anything can craft whilst I'm here? now. Just gonna save so I don't have to pick up anything if I have to reload. <coughs> Excuse me. Metal polymer composite, huh? Time to fight fire with fire. I'm coming, Rose. Ready cannons, fire cannon, L1 for guard. Oh, it's got a chainsaw, cool. And then R2 for machine gun. You can go all the way around with this, it's pretty sweet.
so the cannon will have a cooldown on it. Understandable. You're like a goddamn cockroach! You think you can take me on? Fine. This will be my warm up before I kill that bitch. Let's settle this. Man, a man. Your corpse will be another addition to my army! Time to wrap things up. So this is the power of fatherly love, huh? <laughs> You're stronger than you look. Try <laughs> hard! Show me what you've got! I need more! Coward! In the face of my steel glory! Guess I do have to thank that bitch for Andrew for this. <laughs> I'll kill her with the power she gave me. That's what I call being a good son! <laughs> Do you know how I felt? Spending years under the bitch's thumb! The villagers are nothing but a bunch of worthless peons! I'm a goddamn freedom fighter! I'll use your cute little dog. The clock is ticking me, friend. Put it down to open. Yeah, not gonna lie. I like how they mentioned Boulder Punching, by the way, with Chris, but I agree. There's not really a sense of threat right now in this. <laughs> Don't die like the world's watching. Here we go, Ethan. The final stretch. Well, what do you think? It's hopeless. Right? Just give up. Flesh and blood will never win against me! This isn't David and Goliath. It's Ethan and the bloody demise! Yeah, in fact, that's the one thing I have noticed. There's not a lot of insta-kill um, stuff in this game, I've noticed. Apart from the baby, but you kind of have to... Uh, you kind of have to get caught by him, so... It's your last shot. <laughs> Too bad. You'll be frozen in the afterlife. 
Eisenberg a little bit underwhelming. He's not. I don't find him as memorable as the other bosses. No way. Fishboy was more memorable. At least with Fishboy, you could like get eaten if you didn't do the little path thing properly. I heard explosions. What the hell happened? I dealt with Heisenberg. Now I'm gonna find Miranda and get Rose back. Not without me. It's too dangerous. Wait there. You hear me? Ethan. Rose. Ethan! Ethan, respond! Mia? Our child. She's so important, isn't she? She's everything to me. <laughs> and mine to me. With Heisenberg gone, you've lost your lead. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm saving Rose. You'd never know, do you? Even when I took Mia's place in your home. Poor Ethan. Who are you? Where's Rose? <laughs> Miranda. Enough. Remember Evelyn and her power over them all? Rose is her successor. No. Rose is Evelyn's true, complete form. She will grow to fully control the masses. And I must have her! Fuck you, you crazy bitch! Calm yourself. Rose will be saved. The Mega My Seat catalogs all of us. I'm liking the parasitic trees. She will be reborn as my daughter. She's my child, not yours! Where are you? Show yourself! Why did Rose come to be? Was it because of her parents? And you are truly a special case. Was she the I've learned all I can. Your worth as a lab rat has run out. Miranda! You coward! Come on and face me! Don't worry. Your death will come quick. You will join the Mega My Seeds records. I will make sure to sample your blood for later. Once dawn breaks, the ceremony will be complete, and I will become her true mother! Bound for eternity in blood. <laughs> I've waited so long. But dreams really can go true. Vessel or not, I can't wait to see my true child. Captain, I've confirmed the death of Ethan Winters. I wasn't able to retrieve the body, but I've recorded evidence. <clears throat> Share your screen, and I'll go over the situation. My team and I were careless. Yesterday, we took down the transformed Miranda, but we didn't kill her. Who knew 
Maybe she could fake being a corpse. Since Miranda could have infected Ethan, I forcefully took him and Rose with us. But the vehicle they were riding in was attacked. When I got to the wreck, Ethan and Rose were gone. The last time I was able to contact Ethan, I heard Miranda's voice. She murdered him. And she is not gonna get away with it. God damn it, when does it end? What's that, sir? The mission? All of it. Three years trying to put this thing in the ground. Three years too long. So BSAA got here already. They didn't waste any time. Mission adjustment? No, doesn't change anything. Terminate Miranda and rescue Rose. That's the mission. And failure's not an option. Let's have some fun, people. Like old times. Move out. Roger. Yes, sir. K-9, I want to know what the hell BSAA is doing here. Find out what you can. Roger that. I'm on it. In a while since we fought together, Captain. Oh, cool. When was it last? The desert? Doing nothing but recon's gotten me out of shape. But thanks to your recon, we know Miranda's plan. What does Chris have? Dragoon, target locator. Oh, he's got a different looking knife. What's this? That's pretty cool. Couldn't quite believe it when I heard she turn herself into Mia, though. Taking five shots to the head's nothing to sneeze at either. Spooky. Pretty rough down there. How are you planning on reaching the objective? First, we're gonna have to take that thing out. I've got your back, boss. Let's get to work. Everyone, watch for hostile bioweapons. Roger. Made contact with a group of hostile bioweapons. There's more than we thought. Watch out. Roger that. BSAA craft spotted. Two guards. <laughs> I could take them. Don't get cocky.
boss, it's me. I'm at the location preparing for support fire. Might be a minute. Roger. Tundra here. Leaving some supplies in one of the houses, Captain. Help yourself. That's pretty cool, the night vision. Probably gonna only be used in certain areas though. I shoot that away or not. Nope. Looks so like we have to find a different way around. Umberize, I need some backup. <laughs> the target location. Damn, this is big. All right, Lobo. Marking the target. Roger that, boss. Bingo! All right! Reloading now. Just a minute. It's a swarm hitting that way. Do I have anything else I can use? Flash grenades. 
Could be useful. I'm reloaded. Where should I go? Found a way down. I'm going in. The rest of you stay back. Captain, I compared the mold in the village with a sample from the bakers, and uh, there's no sign of the genome editing we saw in the E series. The stuff originated here. Megamycete, huh? Damn it, get nowhere. Lobo, I got a tough guy here. I'm gonna need backup. Boss, you're on the ground. There's an opening in the roof. Use it. Okay, I'm moving out. Hold on till I get there. Signal with the locator. Was the fake Mia? Where's the real one? I doubt she saw any further use for her. I don't get any of this. How did Miranda even know Rose exists? A moldy little bird told her, maybe? We can figure that out later. Focus on the plan. I found it. It's the Megamycete. Alpha the squad. I've located the Megamycete. So now we can end this mess after all. About damn time. It looks like a giant fetus. <sighs> and two explosives armed. There's enough there to blow the whole village sky high. Let's get out of here and blow the damn place. Not before I end Miranda. I'm not taking any more chances. I'm going in. Roger that. 
Captain, I have eyes on Miranda at the ceremony site. Keep your distance. Do not move until I give the order. I know it's too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. There wasn't time. We didn't expect Miranda to act so soon. Even so, you should have told him. Yeah. This must be Miranda's lab. Mikado. So they're using this to control the bioweapons. My Eva, it's been 100 years since I lost you to the Spanish flu. I was so powerless back then, but now, now I can bring you back to life from the Megamycite. Megamycite, sorry. <laughs> I keep mispronouncing it. I had to test your new vessel's regenerative abilities. I took her apart and revived her in the Megamycite regulator, the giant's chalice. That's the item that we got from all the flask pieces, isn't it? All that's left is to merge her with the Megamycite. The ceremony can finally begin. After I lost you, I was so stricken with grief that I wandered into a cave to die. I so wanted to be with you again, and that's when I found it, the Megamycete, completely by accident. When I touched the black substance, my mind was overcome with knowledge. The Megamycete breaks down and absorbs the consciousness of those who have perished. I knew that if if your consciousness was in there too, I'd be able to find a way to bring you back. I just needed the right vessel. When I returned to the village, I implanted the villagers with mold from the Megamyces. The way I could control them, experiment on them. I have experimented on hundreds of people just to find you the perfect vessel. I even tried to increase the efficiency of finding a vessel by creating a parasite called Kadu. Yet none of my experiments came to fruition, and there were some like Alcina who were close to being perfect, but turned into mo most turned into lichens. I was once approached by an organization who said they would assist me. I gave them some of the mold and your DNA, but all they created was another defect, Eveline. Then again, not a complete failure. I learned of Rose thanks to them, and I knew she would be the perfect vessel. There was some interference, but I was able to verify her suitability, and now my research is finally complete. Eva, I have waited too long to see you again. Do you think there's going to be something written on the back? That's because I played too much of Seven. There was a lot of uh, photos that were like that. Dear Miranda, my deepest apologies for not meeting you in person. I'd love nothing more than to visit your quaint village once more. However, I'm incredibly busy. Then again, I suppose for an immortal woman such as yourself, you no longer remember this poor half-dead medical student in the snow. I've always cherished the revelations I came to 15 years ago when I stayed in your village. I was inspired by your research to think one could transform a human by infecting them with an organism positively visionary. I knew that with the knowledge I could achieve my own vision for the next steps in human evolution. Even after two world wars and humanity on the cusp of another, my conviction never wavered. I realized, however, that not that... Uh, Sorry, I realized, however, through the many nights of intellectual talks you and I shared that your conviction differed from mine. You hoped to bring back a single dead person, or I aimed to change the world. 
Your experiments on the mold would not have aided me in my endeavour to achieve an exponential infection. I thought a virus would be more effective. That is why, my dear, I had to leave you. I regret never telling you goodbye. My apologies, my apologies for reminiscing. I actually have news that I thought might please you. I found the key to evolution, the progenitor progenitor of a progenitor a virus found in Africa. I plan to start a company with friends and colleagues dedicated the to the virus research. I will call it Umbrella, just like the symbol in that cave that we spoke about. I'm one step closer to making my vision a reality. I hope you will be able to achieve your goal someday too. You taught me so much about that I'll ever be in your debt. Your sincerely your lifelong student, Oswell E. Spencer. Spencer, here. Yep. That old bloke in the wheelchair. No way. That Wesker like completely decimated in the uh, five DLC, Lost in Nightmares DLC, was it? If I remember correctly. Show me your hands! Umbrise, this is Alpha. Where is Miranda right now? Still at the ceremony site. Whatever she's doing, she's staying put. God damn. It really is you. I'm glad you saved me. Why are you here? I was caught. In Houston experiments. In the flesh. What's the situation up there? Kind of a war going on. Nothing we can't handle. Don't get distracted. Stick to the mission. I'm headed to the ceremony site. Wait. You can't leave me here. You promised, damn it. You said that you would keep us safe. We did everything that you asked. We moved over here, everything. And I didn't care. So long as we were together. So you tell me, where is my husband? Where is my daughter? Ethan is gone. I couldn't save him, but I can save Rose. Come on, it's not safe here after all. What do you mean he's gone? He's dead. I'm sorry, Mia, but we have to leave. We have to destroy this village. No! You're wrong. I tried to keep this a secret, but... You don't understand how special he is. What's going on? Is <laughs> uh, uh, there? It's cold. How did I get here? 
Freeze it. Just shed my body. You're so dumb. Evelyn? How are you here? You're dead. <laughs> dead? I mean, Miranda. She... No. I still have to save Rose. Wrong! <laughs> it wasn't Miranda. You were always dead. What are you saying? I can still... See? Miranda didn't kill you. You mean you didn't think it was weird? No matter how much you got hurt? Remember? Oh shit. No way. It was Jack that killed him. Years ago, the Baker House. You were murdered by Jack. You died there three years ago. That, that's, that's impossible. No way. You shouldn't even be able to walk around. Quit messing with my head. You shouldn't be walking. Screw <laughs> you! What, what am I? I... I... I, I did all that. <laughs> Rose, Mia, I... Now do you get it? <laughs> Your whole body is nothing but mold. your family again. Family. Family. No. Rose. I have to save my daughter. You're already dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will save Rose. <sighs> so they definitely borrowed a book out of prototype, kind of. So Ethan's just literally mauled. At last, he awakes. Where am I? My carriage, Ethan. You were having a nightmare. 
Duke? Your battle with Heisenberg was a sight to see. But to think Miranda would show herself. How long have I been out? Not long till dawn. Duke, I need a favor. Take me to Miranda. I assumed as much and I'm already on the way. We should arrive shortly. Thank you. <laughs> but Ethan, are you sure of this? Your body is, well, falling apart. <sighs> yes. Foolish of me to ask. Speaking of foolish questions, who or what are you? <laughs> Even I can't quite answer that. We're here. I owe you one. Mr. Winters, I'm afraid you can't return to your old world any longer. Are you ready? Yeah, I have to be. I gotta go. Duke's Emporium has everything you need for your decisive battle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Choose wisely. Your life may depend on it. SVG. Oh, that's the, uh, <laughs> it looks a bit like the Clob, actually, from uh, Goldeneye. Leave this to me. Please, be well. Thanks.
beautiful daughter. Come to me. If... Is that you? Oh, how I've missed you! What? My power is leaving me! Rose! Miranda! Interesting. Your body certainly isn't normal. Give Rose to me! Now! You will see. Once I kill you properly, every- Get her, now! Let go! I've spent a lifetime creating this moment. And you try to take it away from me. I will take what is due. My desires will be fulfilled! No. Rose is mine! What the fuck? You fulfilled your purpose. Fucking eldritch abomination. You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Megamice. Now, please do not worry for little Rose. I assure you, I'll provide her with true happiness. So now you can die peacefully. You understand the love of a parent. I'm not letting you get away. How can you deny me? Why the hell can't you realize Rose is my goddamn kid, not yours? The Megamycete saved me from the pits of despair. It granted me this splendid power. Yeah, right. All it's done is drive me nuts. Such vitality. How disgusting. Will this kill you? <laughs> now, Mr. Winters, I think it's time you left things in my hands. Oh, yes. The hell I will! If I combine Rose with a Megamycete, my daughter will be made manifest at last! I've waited a century, a century, oh. all for this day! You still stop. My goddamn daughter, you psycho! There's nothing. <laughs> Come on. Just.
curse this round shall finish. Ethan! Ethan! Come on, Ethan. Come on, Ethan, wake up! Oh, no. Chris. Ethan. You did it. It's finished. I think we've finished each other. Ethan. We gotta move. Keep moving, Ethan. There's a bomb in that thing that'll blow this whole village sky high. Hey, look at me. When I hit this trigger, we can't be anywhere near it. Ah, damn it. Mia's waiting for you. She's alive, you hear me? Alive. Mia. I'm so sorry. I love you. Keep Rose safe. Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> Tell yourself. Now come on, it's not that much further. Watch over her. Teach her to be strong. God damn it. Goodbye, Rosemary. Ethan.
Go. Go, take us up now. Get moving. We have to get clear. No! We can't go! Not without my husband! Mia, sit down and strap in. Not before you tell me where Ethan is. I know he wouldn't abandon us. Tell me what's going on. Where? Down. Where is he? Chris, what have you done? He's gone. I tried. He stayed so we could all escape. I'm sorry. Captain, you need to see this. BSAA didn't send soldiers. This is a bioweapon. The hell were they thinking? Orders, Captain. Pick up the rest of the squad. Plot a course for BSAA Europe HQ. Someone's got to pay. That was wild, man. I wonder if there's anything after the credits. It more than likely is. Gifts we gave, but more you took, she snarled. So more, in turn, is due. In a blink, the girl was trapped inside a mirror. Her parents, though, had searched all day and at last arrived. With rampant rage, father fought the witch, while mother's loving touch shattered the dark enchantment. But the witch was strong, and father yelled, Save our daughter! So mother bore their child to safety as the forest was consumed. 
Even now, the burnt forest is a grim reminder of father's sacrifice. To this day, any child who stares too long into the charred wasteland will be haunted by nightmares of getting lost while picking berries. So the rest of the tile was pretty much mirroring what Ethan did. That's that's good. I like the symbolism. Might as well check the DLCs whilst I'm here and see what order I've got to play them in. The ending theme is really good, by the way.
Oh, we've got a bit after the credits. <laughs> Do you think the little boy will be able to touch the moon? Nobody can touch the moon. It's too far away. Wait, what if he has a rocket ship? Uh, okay. Then you can touch it, but it'd be very, very cool. You were being silly. I don't <laughs> think the moon is. Uh, I think it does. <laughs> but it's. Hey, Dad. Happy birthday. Now Rose is all grown up. Sorry I missed last week. I have a lot of tests coming up. You know how it is. <laughs> Talk of the goddamn devil. Duty calls. I love you. Yeah, I found her. Where else? The day of all days. <clears throat> we have a situation. You're needed, Evelyn. Don't you ever call me that again. Whoa. Whoa, it's just a joke, Rose. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do. We have a clear shot. Stand down. I can handle it. Way to keep it together, Rose. You're a lot like him, you know. I know. The father's story is now done. I guess that's the last we see of Ethan then. Ethan can rest easy. Do I have to press a button or something here? Yeah. I cleared the game in about nine hours. It's not bad. Uh, I've unlocked the following concept. Extra content shop concept figure. Oh, figures are back in this game. Um, concept art and challenges. Complete challenges listed in the challenge menu to receive completion points. The completion points can be exchanged for a variety of bonuses and extra content shop. New game mode weapons, concept art figures. Um, Village of Shadows for ah, uh, what's this? Following movies have been added. Village of Shadows, the full version. That's both things put put through it, I guess. <laughs> put his body in vats of rubbing alcohol. I don't think there's anything left, considering what what happened. Creating the Village of Shadows level design. Uh, Resident Evil Village. That would be fun to watch, some of these, anyway. Ethanol. <laughs> oh dear.
just think if like one cell had survived and it was able to just regenerate, that would be like a mind blown kind of moment. Wait until they bring him back for like Resident Evil 12 or something. That begs the question then, if they've written off like Ethan and, and done him in completely, I guess like Nine's going to be focusing more on Rose. But then again, there's an entire DLC based around Rose. So I. I don't know. We'll have to find out when I play through it. Yeah, he's pulling a Deadpool or Wolverine. I could see it. Unless he suffers the fate of Steve Burnside, where they, like, just never bring him back at all. I mean, Steve's practically dead, really, even though Wesker alluded to keeping his body somewhere. But he never, like, did anything with it, so... S somewhere in my head canon that Steve Burnside's body is just in the freezer hanging around in some arctic base somewhere and Wesker never got a chance to like utilize it in any way I think he even mentions declaring code Veronica that he has his body still I wonder if they ever explain that probably not Capcom do have a tendency to like forget about certain characters after a while. I haven't actually, I'll check it out after the stream. Level design, movie. I bet you when I go to load these, uh, PlayStation 4's like, no, we're not, not letting you uh, watch any of these. I wouldn't mind going through the development stuff though. We could have a little uh, movie night watch if, if the game lets me look at them anyway. Chances are it won't, but I'll check in a minute. You can now get the following weapon weapon from Extra Content Shop. The WCK. No, CX, sorry. Look, a K, not an X. A challenge completed. You've completed the following challenges. Not liking, the, not liking this. Four Lords, that sucked. Got no strings. Fish out of water up yours. Uh, temporary measures, iron giant down, great dad, crafter, pa pa patron, petty thief, repairer, get the ball rolling, push comes to shove, strategist, strip miner, cynic, cynic, I wonder what cynic is uh, for, overwrite, um, yeah, we'll save. Completed data save successful. I guess it means I can just load up the game again and go through with all my equipment. Bit would be like RE4 if I had to guess. Just let me double check. That's the auto save. Yeah, completed. It says here completed data. Game completed one time over. So yeah, it's just like four, where you just like save and then load again and go through. Let's have a look at the bonuses real quick. We have mercenaries mode. We'll, we'll play around with that another time. I'll probably do it after I'm done with the Shadows of Rose DLC. Baker incident report. Extra content shop. Yeah, you can buy, like, infinite ammo. This is definitely RE4, or, or, well, not just RE4, RE5-like in a lot of ways. So you have to, like, upgrade everything to max to get infinite ammo perks. You can buy figures, just like RE5. Concept art, it's a bunch of concept stuff. Didn't it say there was a bunch of movies? Here we go. Remembering RE7, little summary. That's the tale in its full entirety. Do 
be funny if there was a, like a little like oh what's the word I'm looking for like some kind of way of knowing what streams you've been modded on and when and where sort of thing what's that thing called on discord now when you can look for the history of interactions similar to that that kind of thing I always forget the, the terminology for it but that's a thing isn't it where you can look at like recent things even if they're like oh, isn't it like called something like uh it's gone it's like, it's it's like a history script or something to a, to some sort of degree can we watch any of these or is PlayStation gonna block them let's find out oh wait no that's the that's creating the village of shadows introduction to the level design here we go Some, something like this with the mo capping I think that stuff was blocked in RE5 not RE5 uh, DMC5 I wonder if it's blocked here let's find out final version oh no it is viewable somewhat I, I think I just I don't understand why you are so what the hell? Mia, get down. Is that is she kinda neat? <laughs> I love this kind of stuff by the way. Sorry. Of mocap stuff. It looks so goofy. That's Lady D's scene, isn't it? Yeah. Seductive hand tasting one oh one. The mo cap hat's brilliant. Because he is in my castle and has already taken too much for my daughters to handle. When I find him, I won't let you down. Oh, no! To hell with the ceremony! That man will pay for what he's done. Oh, there's Maru. <laughs> the dull mo cap is brilliant. Let's see what you really want. Let's see what you really want. Get ready. No, wait! Man blood. <laughs> oh, the sisters, yeah. I actually liked the sisters in Lady D's house. They were really fun. I found them more fun than Lady D herself, to be honest.
introduction to the develop visual development. High quality, but yeah, it's definitely high quality. Every individual pore, that's crazy. Mind blowing that like this same thing sort of applies across to everything pretty much. Rest in peace this guy, he didn't survive very long. I definitely like the infected in this game. They kept me on my toes quite a lot. I mean, the mold in 7 were fun, but they were very lumbering and slow in parts. As well as the um, <laughs> Joe DLC just kind of making them a complete joke by the end of it. This thing was just El Gigante's, like, younger brother or something. Man, the detail's insane. So much goes into these games, it's crazy. And a lot of people tend to overlook it. Ooh, grey box. Grey box just looks like an early like uh, early access. It's crazy. It's cool though. I love seeing stuff like this. Like how they put stuff together. That's pretty neat. Next we've got level design. Although we kind of had a little bit of it at the end of that one, but let's see some more of it. Good for me, have subs, by the way. Mazahajimini, ディレクターとのやり取りでコンセプトに沿って正しくゲームに反映されているかの確認を行います。バイオハザードの場合は怖いかどうかが大きな判断基準になるので、怖さや緊張感が要求に達しているかの確認も行います。演出やゲーム
ホラーという限られた枠組みの中で種類の違う体験を用意する必要があるところですヴィレッジに限らずバイオハザードシリーズのレベルデザイン制作においては怖いものにアンテナを張っていて怖がらせることに対して引き出しが多い人が向いていると思います敵で驚かしたりパズルでなるほどと思わせたりさまざまな思考や感情を生み出すことが要求されますミレッジでユーザーに体験見てほしいシチュエーションとしてはいろいろな表情を見せる作り込まれた村を隅々まで体験してほしいです恐怖を感じつつも住むといろいろな体験や発見があるはずですWe have an introduction in the creation of the Village of Shadows picture book. Oh, yeah, the animation style to this just reminded me of like Coraline or something. I actually kind of dig it. Let's、uh, have a look at how that came to be. Storyboard looks awesome to be fair. Man, the anim animatics look a little bit creepy. Kind of uncanny valley at times. Yeah, that was neat. I liked that. We don't really need to see the full vision, version of the Shadow, the, the Village of Shadows. I've already been through the game once. Out of curiosity, what, how do they present Seven in this game? <laughs> I might as well have a look, even though we have played it. 
Uh, summary of Ethan's story. I, I've got to think it's just footage, isn't it? With a narrative over it, maybe. <sighs> okay. Where to start? My name? It's Ethan. Ethan Winters. It's been three years since everything happened at the Baker House. I was looking for my wife, who disappeared. I got an email from her. She told me to come get her. And of course, that's how I ended up in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana. I found Mia being held captive in a dark basement. She wasn't thinking right. She attacked me like some kind of wild animal. Later on, I found out that she was infected by a special kind of mold. I looked all over the house trying to find an antidote, a vaccine, anything. The people who lived there were already infected. Lucas. What was left of them wasn't human. The source of the infection was a bioweapon that looked like a little girl. Her name was Evelyn. I fought the fucked up family and was able to treat Mia's symptoms with a serum. Then Chris Redfield and his soldier buddies showed up and saved the both of us. Is that enough? I really don't want to talk about what happened anymore. It's all over now. Oh, is that supposed to be like a tape that's being recorded or something? Or, well, not a tape, but like a recording. Like on record, I guess, with the umbrella blue. That's pretty cool. I like that little bonus stuff that you can look at. I wish more games would do that kind of thing, to be honest, with development stuff. Especially when you like, like finish the game and stuff like that. It's always fun to see that kind of thing. Capcom seemed to do it quite a lot. Um, I mean, they did have like a little montage in DMC3, actually, with the mocap and all that stuff. I think it was in the special edition, anyway, if I remember correctly. I don't have any figures to look at. I don't have the uh, points for them yet. I've got a bunch of them, but I've not unlocked them yet. What's the challenge section like? Now, so it's like completing stuff on different difficulty. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit like the challenge section from RE6 a little, actually. We just do multiple stuff. Except the incentive here is you get more points for it, completion points. It's quite nice. Open the door to every outhouse in the village in a single playthrough. I f guess I missed a couple of them. Hooligan, break every breakable window. Lots of stuff to come back and do consecutive playthroughs with, I suppose. There's a few concept art things here. Oh, they've got some RE7 concept art here. That's kind of interesting. How do I hide this? There we go. Annabelle, Margaret, Kevin. These, yeah, some of these had different names. Jack didn't change much. Meg was a lot thicker. Or Marg, Mar I guess it's supposed to be Margaret. She was a lot thicker, I guess. Kevin's obviously Lucas. Annabelle turned out to be Zoe, I guess. Wait, wheelchair girl was Margaret <laughs> in the concept? That's crazy. 
Chris Redfield looks even older. He's got white hair in this. Oh god, the original molded looked terrible. Looked like someone just dumped a sack of flour on somebody and, and that's it. Called it a day. Eveline. So I'll go Dave Anderson. That's the guy who gets killed with the shovel. Mia, Ethan. Oh yeah, the camera crew. Who had totally different names. Uh, Manu Manuel. Manuel. Ended up being Clancy, I believe. Art director's comment. Oh, there's actual commentary on here. Hold on. Included some character models that were different or didn't even appear in the final version of the game, such as the dog. Uh, Chris was originally going to be uh, going to be early middle aged. <laughs> I'm changed their minds on that one. A dog. I wonder what the dog was going to be like. It's pretty interesting. What do we have here? Initial rough drafts of Ethan and Mia when they were not going to be uh, married. But strangers. Ethan was an investigator and Mia was a missing person. Yeah, I can see why they changed that. There's more of a personal stake um, for the player if they're looking for someone that, you know, that the main character cares about. I mean, I suppose the investigate thing isn't too bad, but yeah, there's more, definitely more personal stake of them being married. Family photo of the bakers. Here we plan. This was good. This, what this? Uh, when this picture was planned, the old woman and young girl were separate characters. Okay. Man, Luke. I can't get over how different Lucas looks, as well as having a different name. Which doesn't sound as as good. I mean, Kevin, really. Uh, initial rough draft of the family bake, including a wide range of bizarre characters. Daughter, mother, son, dog. Father. Servant? Who the hell was the servant supposed to be? Yo, this, some of this is wild. I guess there was supposed to be twins at some point as well. Man, some of this is really off the wall. Totally different. I mean, I know it's all different in concept anyway, but like that, the thing that's blowing my mind is the twins and the servant. I definitely wonder what kind of role they would have played in terms of story. Another rough draft of the bakers has each member associated with a particular colour. Jack was yellow, Margaret was purple, Lucas was blue, and Zoe was red. Rough draft of Evelyn, Chris, and Dave. The young one in the middle was originally the youngest baker, Remy, but he was cut. Evelyn ended up taking his place. Yeah, there's only really one room for one creepy child in Seven, really. I couldn't imagine having another one. Besides, Lu I suppose in a way, Lucas kind of took over that role anyway. Because he was creepy right from the get-go. He wasn't, like, uh, what's the word, all there. I mean, he ended up locking a kid in his uh, attic, didn't he, at a young age. Uh, Jack's glasses were his focal point for his character during early development. Image on the right of his uh, chainsaw fights. Yeah, the glasses are kind of iconic though. Especially when with what, what we got later on. The chainsaw fight's really cool. It's one of the key moments I enjoyed in 7. Left shows an early design for a mutated Jack where he looked more like himself. This was later changed so the player could easily identify his weakness. 
Oh yeah, because they put eyeballs all over the place, didn't they? Which made more sense. I mean, to be fair, going off Capcom logic, if they'd have gone with this design, they probably just would have made his head his weak point, like everything else. Or a glowing spot on his back, probably. Picture on the right is a design for me as colleague Alan, who I guess never made the final cut, I'm assuming. I don't remember anyone called Alan. Uh, one idea for Margaret's mutated form is the original thought of a design similar to earlier Resident Evil games with lots of body parts coming out of her. Mm. They ended up going for a new and refreshing design. Yeah, I'm glad they did. We've had so many things coming out of it, really. A picture of Eveline's final form, enlarged by mould. When we were designing her, we had to show each department for how each part of her fitted together with the head from the centre. Tentacle attack, tentacle, arm, head and mouth. There's not really too much of a difference, really. It looks similar to what we fight in at the end, anyway. These are the rough drafts of Eveline's final form, her old woman form transforming into the giant monster that absorbed her body. Yeah, she became like a giant mass at the end. And we ended up shooting with that weapon. Main antagonist were the Baker family, so the designs of the general monsters, the molded, were some of the hardest ones. They need to stand out without taking any attention away from the bakers. The bakers look realistically human, thanks to a technique using scanned photographs, so we wanted the moulded to not outshine them. I can see why they went with like the design like they did with the moulded. The one on the left does look distinctly, vaguely human-esque. I can see, yeah, I can see why they didn't go with that in the end. The less human that the molded look, the better, basically. Uh, design for the four-legged molded, named molded, comes from mold and transformed. Uh, we wanted the enemy names in Resident Evil 7 to be one that the Baker family might have come up with themselves. Well, Lucas ended up naming the big one Fat Boy, didn't he? Which is literally fat molded on the Resident Evil wiki, which is kind of humorous. This one was just called Athletic Mold from the correctly. Design for the fat molded in the bottom right, you can see how the molded are made. Uh, victims kept in cages covered with mold and then left for two to three days to turn. So, like, they're submerged in a bath, they pour the mold, and there you go. <laughs> They turn. Good stuff. What do we have here? Uh, moments and molded are born. You know something? They should have maybe put something like that left in the game, actually. Like a moment where you get to see a molded come out from the bath. That would have been kind of neat. That way the player would have kind of gotten an idea of how they're born. Then again, you do see them come out of the wall in that like massive like uh, covered space section where they come out from. You kind of get to see one birthed, kind of. But one coming out of the bath would have been pretty sweet. A uh, rough draft, the type of white molded was axed. This was going to be a female variety that had tentacles resembling hair. Underneath the hair was a mouth like appendage that extends out and attacks. There were also early development plans to have an antibody gun that would have been effective against the molded. It's me actually, because that became <laughs> Chris's uh, uh, gimmick, didn't it, in the um, uh, DLC for him. 
because you'd have to like shoot the ramrod rounds into them and then you could actually damage them and stuff. I'm not too keen on this design. It looks a bit too similar to um, uh, Veronica from Code Veronica a little bit. It looks too similar. The final design here looks okay, but like the early concept, I just I just see Veronica um, from Code Veronica. Not Veronica. Uh, Alexia, that's it. Alexia's like form. Alexia Ashford's like a uh, mutated tyrant form. Ooh, we get to see the design for Margaret's creepy crawlers from the top. They're adult and young man eating insects as well as man eating spiders that live in doorways. They were made pallid in order to appear less repulsive. Insects found in some real abandoned buildings, Louisiana, were used as reference. They definitely did their homework with that. I do like the insects that Margaret carries with her. They're pretty awesome. Art from early development of RE7. This is the moment we decided the setting and the whole game was based in, Amer in the American South. Powerful image, to be fair. Still a little bit different from what we would end up getting, but still. I like how the crows are like still flying around. The main dining room inside the house. There weren't plans for a main house in the guest house at this point. Jeez, that is very early concept here. Yeah. Uh, this was drawn when we were coming up with the ideas for the guest house and trying to work out the size and the layout of the house. There's the stairwell that you can, that you pass, yeah. Are there supposed to be dolls that are hanging up from there? An underground area where the family kept a terrifying monster that needed a large feeding hatch. Oh, that would have been perfect for the dog, actually. They could have had, like, a mutated dog instead. That would have been cool. Early concept art of the guest house. The size is close to the final version, but the light coming in made it less scary. The final version was a lot darker. Yeah, it does seem a bit too light. More bright, I suppose. Concept art for the guest house living room. This became the room where the VCR was found in the release version of the game. Oh yeah, that was played in the demo as well, I think. Uh, the layout became too difficult to understand and navigate in game, so it got a complete overhaul. Concept art for the second floor of the guest house. This was changed to the third floor with a hidden staircase. Concepts are showing Andre's corpse in the guest house basement. One initial idea was to have the player take the flashlight from Andre's body. That would have been pretty neat, but then again, Ethan already goes in with a flashlight to begin with, so... <laughs> I guess the idea was to wander around the house in complete darkness. And then get the light from Andre. A uh, concept for the scene in the guest house where Mia crawls up the stairs towards them. Nothing too different here. It's exactly what we saw in the final game. Where she turned into the ring girl for a little bit. Uh, the final design of the main house was based on site research of Louisiana. The outside of the baker's home is based on the plantation houses that date back to the American Civil War and the era of slavery in the US. A rough design of the main house. Initial plans had a windmill in the front yard. Later research revealed that there are no windmills in Louisiana. 
the house was also surrounded by open land and not the bay, which didn't make it feel like a horror game at all. I was going to say, it does seem a little bit out in the open. Like, y if you want the player to feel more claustrophobic, you gotta, you got to, like, densely pack that area, really. Because otherwise they could just run off and run as far, far away as possible. The house was surrounded by open land, not the bay, which didn't make it for... Yeah, yeah, it, does, it definitely doesn't give it a horror game feel at all. Because the pro tag could just run. <laughs> Putting a bayou there was a lot to... Lots of a better idea for it. A talisman designed for Resident Evil 7 made by Jack out of cow heads and legs based on an image of molded bacteria and cells. This looks a bit similar to what you see when you walk in at the beginning, except it it's less than that. It's like a couple of like bodies strewn together crudely. Well, carcasses, I should say, like horse and cow carcass. Early development concept art for the main house. The final version did not have you enter through the front door. The layout for the second floor was also completely different. The dining room of the main house had a completely different feel from the final version. The room and lighting atmosphere changed after on-site research. One of the biggest differences was the main table. It used to be square, but we found a round table in the Louisiana home, which better suited the family coming together. Yeah, round tables look better than square tables in, in certain settings, I guess. Depends on the interior, but it really does suit the atmosphere here more so. The garage in the main house that you fight Jack in initially had plans, had the garage and boiler together in a single room. I wonder if the idea was to like maybe try and get Jack inside the boiler or something. Uh, the sunlit entrance hall in the main house, this was very different from the final version with the grandma grandfather clock in the centre and curved stairs. Yeah, the clock was on the upper. F the clock was on the upper floor, weren't it? No, 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 it wasn't. It was in the other room, wasn't it? There was two clocks, if I remember correctly. That staircase looks way different too. Until the final version, early concept art included a large open yard. Is that a greenhouse over there? I see. A greenhouse would have been interesting. Probably would have had some killer plants in there or something. Concept art for the entrance hall is much closer to the final version. The room is full of furniture and several taxidermied animals, giving it a lived-in feel. Yeah, they definitely went full ham with the taxidermy. Oh, the shadow puzzles that are in the main house. The rooms needed to be used for fights and puzzles, so we tried to make them as disconnecting as possible. Disconcerting, not disconnecting. I did like the shadow puzzles. I thought they were very different. It was a nice little uh, change. Shadow puzzle in the old house. Lucas's room. Crow key, scorpion key, and snake key, and their doors on the right is designed for the free headed dog relief. On the right is the design for the free headed dog relief, I should say. Not much of a difference. The dog looks like it's standing more so. I think it's sitting in the original, if I recall. The keys look kind of cool, though. 
they don't look too different. Concept art for the yard. There's always plans to have a trailer in the centre of the yard, trapped by the house around it. <laughs> I would actually say that looks better, to be fair. It looks more claustrophobic. But the original one isn't terrible. I do prefer that, though. Early on during development, Zoe's room was not going to be the trailer, but a room in the main house while Easton saves her from. The room was going to have all sorts of Louisiana folklore theme to it. I'm getting massive, like, stoner hippie vibes here, actually. That's pretty cool, though. The old house was once situated on a solid ground. It was flooded by a hurricane, which is why it was separated from the main house and barricaded up. Louisiana is a region that is often hit by major hurricanes, and we wanted to show that the Baker family were impacted by them too. Which is why, if you play that band footage prologue, it does show the storm, so... They kind of like worked that into the band footage thing. Uh, uh, which one was it? Daughters, was it? Yeah, it was Daughters. You can see the dolls in this concept art for the old house. We left objects associated with children all over the house because that was where Evelyn's room is. Not too much of a difference. The creepy dolls were still attached to the wall. A web covered room inside the old house. Was this. A, yeah, this is obviously supposed to be like something Margaret would uh, inhabit. Which we would end up getting anyway in the old house, because that's her domain. Uh, concept art for the old house shows an image of a room with a severely damaged floor. Beyond that, you can see the staircase that leads to the child children's room, or child's room. Margaret walks down the corridor with a candle to receive mould from Evelyn. The deconstruction of the room was caused by a hurricane. So it's a little bit like the old house. In fact, it is the old house. <laughs> the jetty behind the old house, which leads to the bayou. The crow key is kept away from the house in a remote location so no one can get to it. I did like the, um, the jetty area. It was kind of sweet. Concept for an overgrown greenhouse where Margaret grow her plants. It was a beautiful greenhouse but turned to ruin when Evelyn arrived. This is the location for the boss fight with Margaret. Yeah, you do fight her in like a greenhouse area, yeah. On the lower section anyway, if I remember correctly. But in that other concept art, it looks like they were going to have a possible separate greenhouse as well in the yard. Concept art for mutated Marguerite. Her arms and legs are warped in a terrifying way as she relentlessly pursues Ethan. Yeah, she does look creepy. She's missing that thickness though. Uh, a child's room in the old house that Evelyn lives in. It's full of toys for girls. And there's a doll house and dolls. Dolls are unlike the ones in the entrance to the old house and are based on the moulded. Evelyn grows her family ever larger with the mould. Yes, they do have like a mould-like design to them. That's creepy as heck to be fair. Temporary design for the room behind the child's room. If a life-size doll is seated instead of Evelyn, that is terrifying. Reminds me of the room where you get the arm, actually. Final design for the room behind the child's room where you can find the body to the D series. The ceiling was made to be allowed to give it a claustrophobic feeling. And my lord, it is claustrophobic. 
concept art for Lucas' section of the game. When you enter the room, there are black lights, which make it feel like a nightclub. This was to give players a new, different sense of fear from the rest of the family. Blue and white were key colours for Lucas. Yeah, it does have that sort of like nightclub vibe feel to it. Even in the main game, it feels vastly different. Let's play written on the entrance, Lucas' section of the game. Continue into Lucas's area and expands into white rooms covered in plastic sheeting. Halfway through the development, we decided to make tripwire bombs Lucas's main weapon of choice. Which was awesome, actually, because there was a lot of cool moments that caught me off guard with tripwires. Shooting them out was quite fun. <clears throat> we wanted to make the design for Lucas's area. Uh, Lucas's area from a traditional haunted house. His avant-garde interests really stand out. It was difficult to get the right balance between crazy and comical. Yeah, you don't want to tip that balance where you just go into, like, comedy at that point. Got to get the right mix. Ah, so the four-legged molded were going to appear in Lucas's section. They technically appear outside of Lucas's area, but I think you encounter them in the house as well before then. More concept art for Lucas's area. That looks like the birthday room, but very, very early versions of it. <laughs> Definitely. You can see a number of strange puzzles scattered about Lucas's section in this place. They're based on. They're based not just on Lucas's twisted interests, but the concepts of family and life and death. Such as birthday cake being a symbol for life, while the picture of a hanging corpse and grave are connected to death. The goddess stomach symbolizes life, but is also accompanied by pain. The mold infection does not have a strong grip on Lucas. As a result, he is filled with the most hopelessness, joy and desire for destruction. Yeah, out of all of them, uh, Lucas didn't seem that too affected by the uh, molded that much. <laughs> the doll's supposed to be you. Hanging tombstone. Yeah, that's the code that you put in later on, isn't it? In that one area. Goddess stomach symbolizes life, but it also accompanies pain. I'm not too sure where they're going with the goddess stomach. <laughs> Are they supposed to say pregnancy or something? I'm not too sure. And then like a, a spiky ball. Or is that supposed to look like that when it's fully inflated? I'm not too sure. I'm kind of glad they scrapped that. That would have been a very, uh, very out of the, uh, out of the blue, really. It, look, it looks too jarring, to be honest. Concept art for a cut boat fight when Ethan and Mia escaped the house. The idea was that the fight with Jack would have taken place in the muddy waters. So it kind of would have been like the fish monster from Thor, but much scarier. I guess they couldn't implement it or think of a way to do it properly. I mean, to be fair, the boat doesn't have any weapons on it, so... So it's off the shipwreck, a destroyed tanker, which Evelyn split into two of her powers. Louisiana used to have a thriving gas industry of a large number of tankers. Mia and her colleague, Alan, get passage on the tanker from Europe into the US, pretending to be Evelyn's parents. I just realised Alan was the guy that, yeah, that we talked to in the flashback, so never mind, Alan was in the game. It's just brief. He ends up dying, if I remember correctly. The aim of the shipwreck at the end game was to give the player a renowned sense of fear, a change of pace from the excitement of the fights and puzzles in the Baker House. And yeah, the tanker is very different. I actually really liked it. Sort of reminded me of Revelations 1's, like, 
Queen Zenobia, but more damaged and wrecked, basically. Also industrial, you know. Concept art for Ethan being trapped in the mold by Evelyn on the shipwreck. Vastly different with what, compared to what we got. He doesn't really look very constricted there. In the final game, he's like full body constricted. Uh, concept for the mine, just the front of Lucas's research lab. It's a salt mine, which is why the cave are, cave walls are white. Yeah, that was in the DLC. We ended up going into the mines. Concept art for Evelyn creating mutant my sites. Looks very similar to what Miranda was doing, actually, with the Eldritch Abomination stuff. Concept design for Ethan from early on in Villager's development. He had a backpack for his inventory instead of a suitcase. Concept of Mia reading the picture book in early drafts. She was still recovering from the incidents during Resident Evil 7 and was in a wheelchair. So we're on Village now. Would have been interesting to see her in the wheelchair. Early plans had a mysterious masked person who saves Ethan. This was going to be Ada Wong investigating the village, but this was cut due to a number of conflicting scenarios. I'm so glad they didn't do this. This would have been terrible. Like, it, like if this would have happened, I would have rolled my eyes massively. I was not too wild on Ada in 4, really. I mean, she kind of had a purpose, but like to see this revisited again would have just been awful and it wouldn't have made a lot of sense really because usually it's her chasing after Leon nine times out of ten it wouldn't have made any sense a uh, rough draft of early design from the mistress for Lady D, Lady D her concept was a bewitching vampire with giant garden clippers <laughs> oh god that looks so goofy I can't, I can't help but think of Clock Tower now, actually, with the giant garden scissors. Early development concept art for the Benedito family, based around the idea of a ghost family. Then they changed it to dolls, because dolls made more sense, rather than a ghost family, I guess. A rough, rough draft of the monster Morio, he was going to be a disgusting merman. And through his design, though his design didn't change that much, the parasite on his back was originally going to be a girl once he had f that he once had feelings for. You can also see the flooded village setting. Yeah, I'm glad they went with the just, just the disgusting merman. The whole girl on his back thing would have been cool, I suppose, but it definitely would have clashed with the overall aesthetic. Early draft of the Wolfmen. There's going to be a scenario where young men of the village drank from a chalice and turned, but this was eventually cut. Yeah, I don't think we really need to see them turning. They're terrifying just on their own. Early draft of the Heisenberg family. The biggest difference is that Heisenberg was going to be a twin and his mother was a subject for brain experiments. So they ended up just making it into one. Those are like tyrants. So I guess he was going to have like three tyrant brothers. A mum who's... A mother who's been like... Lobotomized. And there was going to be two brothers. Heisenberg's father was going to be the leader of the village, and the boss fight with the mechanical mutation was originally going to be him. That would have been interesting to see, actually. Ironically, there's a lot more interest around Heisenberg in the concept than there is in the main game, in my opinion. 
There's a lot more potential for different dynamics there, but then again, it were, probably would have been overshadowed. Or rather, it would have overshadowed everything else. An early development rough draft of the leader of the village's lead, leader of the village's religion before we came up with Miranda. He was going to transform into a dragon like monster, but this was later used for Lady D's boss fight, yeah. Hey, it's the Duke. Early development concept art for the Duke. The merchant from the very beginning to the final game, he was going to have a large he was going to be a large character. The Duke is a merchant and a foodie, and was going to be the fifth lord in the early drafts. In Resident Evil seven we utilized a photo scanning technique for the character designs, but in Village we decided to be more creative and tried character designs that didn't look like regular humans. Merchant's carriage, Duke travels with his horse and carriage all over the village. It's his home business. It's his home business and means of transport. That is a Chad uh, right there, to be fair. Symbol of the merchant is a lantern decorated with goat bones. The idea is that you would know it was safe location even from a distance. We have a number of designs, but decided a round silhouette would be more impactful. Yeah, the set. Yeah, the the regular the the circle looks better. The rest of them don't look that great. I have no idea what's going on there. It's like shove a bunch of goat horns on it and call it a day. That one looks more like a warning sign than an actual welcoming. Rough design for the remains left by enemies when you defeat them. The overall balance needed to be achieved in the thumbnail image. The remains of Lady D and Verila Clark are different from the final version, which has a more ornamental feel. Yeah, the crystallized remains look better. Typewriter for Village was designed to be distinguishable for previous games like RE2 and RE3. Yeah, they meant with a more old older style one rather than a more modernized. I like the fact that they actually went out of their way to make it vastly different. Even from the early development of the same gameplay as Resident Evil 7 was used, which was meant for item boxes. However, as development went on, we decided to change the plans to be more like RE4 and remove the item boxes. Makes sense. There's not a lot of inventory management, really, in terms of how it is in 7, I guess. Also, you're not really carrying many items to solve puzzles with, per se, all at once since things do look and feel linear in that regard. Designed for the labyrinth based on the castle Lady D. The labyrinths were designed after seeing something at the end of the 19th century. We're originally going to be tributes to the Four Lords. The labyrinth on the left is Benevito's and was going to be based on Donna's area. The path passes through a graveyard and a waterfall via suspension bridges. The labyrinth on the right, based on Morio's reservoir, and with the windmills in the centre, it was also a design of the fishing village where boats, uh, when it wasn't flooded. That's pretty cool. Heisenberg's labyrinth is based on his factory. It uses train tracks between a house and factory, moving into the coal mines. Early development, concept, art, initial ideas. Had the story switching between the village and modern day and the past, set in medieval times. Mm. 
Two early designs for the altars in the church that display the castle gate reliefs. Early design for an altar in the village that displays castle gate relief itself. That does look creepy. Early design for the safe rooms had a camera at the safe points instead of a typewriter. Interesting concept. Would have been very different. Storyboard for the Lycan's first appearance. We wanted to have a wild animalistic image, unlike the zombies and ganados of the previous games. They do look a lot more visceral. Storyboard for how Ethan's trial with all the lords. At this point in development, it was still the hag followed by the four lords. An early plot point was to have Ada disguising herself with the mask help even escape from the trial. Oh, that would have... That would have been wild. And... Yeah, I'm so glad they didn't put Ada in. The storyboard shows the end of the trial scene as well as Miranda's experiments. Miranda was initially going to be a researcher investigating the village's strange creatures. Concept art for the events that happened in the village before Ethan's arrival. The surviving villagers had locked the gate because the number of people killed by the lichen sealing it with the winged key. Castle de Mistresu concept art. You can see how Lady D was casually drinking blood as if it was uh, wire. Yeah, there she is. Chilling out in her, s in her study, I guess. And there she is again. Concept art of the flying enemies in the courtyard of Castle de Mistresu. Early concepts of the castle. Uh, this was cut from the final version, but the this was where Ethan was going to fight her. That would have been vastly different. I'm glad we went on like the top of that tower. Concept art for the gate leading to the Lycan's lair. We came up with a few designs for the gate leading to the stronghold. Early concept for the birth of lichens. A victim is slowly encased in mold and then emerges transformed. Mario concept art where he watches old romance movies and falls into melancholy. He also loves eating cheese. That's amazing. I kind of wish that we got to see that in the game. I don't know why, but just, just this scene just fills me with joy for some reason. Concept art for one of Donna's dolls. It has a pair of scissors inside it that uses to attack Ethan. That's kind of cool, actually. It's a shame they didn't keep it in. Concept art for one of Donna's dolls that turned into a spider-like monster. We actually did see something similar, but it didn't look this elaborate, if I recall. It had, like, two legs, I think, or at least one leg come out. Had a number of ideas for Donna's dolls, including one with knives coming out of its back and a few wielding weapons in their hands. That looks cool. The other two, not so much. Because they're not, like, attached to the doll per se, they're just sort of holding them. Whereas this one's, like, having it come out of the back of it. Cut designs for a large lichen who commands two changed Verilaclax. 
That would have been cool to see, actually. Various Lycan weapons, including the spiked hammer, torch, and sling. The sling would have been interesting to see. Various Lycan weapons, including a hunting knife, scabbard, sledgehammer, and more torches. A Lycan equipped with the claw-like weapon, which are made from a variety of blades found throughout the village. Designs for armor to use to protect the lower half of the body. Definitely a lot of different designs. What the hell is with the bear? <laughs> Using a bear's, like, a cub's corpse. That's just terribly cruel. Oddly funny looking, though. Not gonna lie. Imagine if they went with that design in the original game. Concept art for a temple close to the Heisenberg factory. Uh, this was initially going to be to the spot where Miranda sat on her throne and conducted the ceremony. Miranda's throne where she was going to be a scene where Miranda sat here holding Rose during the ceremony. It looks like the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones, kind of. Concept for Eisenberg's factory where Ethan is chased by the Soldat series. If the reactors in their chests are destroyed, then the parasites inside will attempt to escape. Which is kind of what we ended up getting anyway. Shooting that would just stun them, I think. Designs for various Soldat reaction, uh, reactors. Final design was a grotesque mechanical heart. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Oh god, imagine if they went with the glass looking design. Concepts are a day in the life of Heisenberg. Night after night, his modified henchmen dig up corpses from the graveyard to be used as his metal army. Boss with the mutated Heisenberg, where he turns into his final form. A uh, concept for Chris's part of the game, although we were unable to explore these characters in depth, details behind Chris's team, the Hound Wolf squad, would have been pinned down. So these would have been the other members of the team. A bit of a shame that we didn't get to elaborate on them. Instead, they all just had the same gear and sounded the same. Storyboard from where the player takes control of Chris to the point where he infiltrates the village. One plan was to focus on each member of the Wolfhound squad. That would have been awesome, actually. But I can see why they could. It, it probably would have been too long. I mean, you've, you're talking like one, two, three, four, five members. That would have made the game even longer. So I can see why this scraps it in the end. Storyboard of Chris fighting alongside the Wolfhound squad inside the village. Tundra, Canine, Umber Eyes. Umber Eyes was mentioned. Lobo was mentioned. I can't remember if Night Hell was. Storyboard of the BSAA arriving at the village as well as saving Mia. I blew my mind that the BSAA are now using like bio agents. Rough deep design for mutated Miranda where she was going to transform into a mold creature. That design looks really odd. Final design's the best design for it. Storyboard at the end of the game of Ethan's death and Chris's decision, creating a sense of uncertainty for a helicopter. 
as it flies over the village. Storyboard for the end credits. Long, long ago, a child was born to a family. The family lived in peace for a while. One day, a sickness fell on the village, and one by one, people began to die. A wife was to succumb to the illness, and there were more graves than survivors. It wasn't long before the daughter got sick, but Miranda used Caddo to create a miracle. She then became a saint. Then the villagers, infected with the parasite, Caddo turned into lichens. There's the cat in the jar. It looks like we've reached the end of the concept stuff. There was a lot of stuff here. And this is really cool for like people who love development. And uh, seeing how things like change over time compared to what we get in the final release of something. I always like that kind of thing. I'm glad they included some of Seven's stuff in there, too. Right, I think we're pretty much done here, really. There's not much else left to look at. Um, I think we're pretty much done. Yeah, yeah, we've already seen the tragedy of Ethan Winter's concept art. You can read a report on events based on bake the Baker stuff. Yeah, it's literally just covering <laughs> it's covering what what we saw in the last game. We don't really need to be looking at that. It's just for people who didn't play seven, I suppose. And they want an entry point even when they play eight. Highly recommended though, if you, if anyone does play eight first, get seven. It, it is worth playing. It's very similar to uh like old school RE, but in first person. Whereas this feels more like Resident Evil 4 Part 2, which is not terrible. It's it's fun. I definitely had a lot of fun with this. Uh, next time on stream, we are going to be doing the Shadows of Rose DLC. And I'll probably do a separate stream where I do Mercs. Just Mercs on its own at that point. See how far I get and how much fun can be had with it, I suppose. I have a feeling it's going to be the same gimmick that Mercenaries is always known for, which is just kill enemies, get more time, get better score, kind of thing. But uh, we'll do that in a separate stream. But we'll be doing the um, Shadows of Rose in the next one. And we'll get to see uh, Rose's uh, like campaign or little... DLC and see where it ends up because now that time has like passed on it's going to be interesting to see where the series is at at that point after this DLC I guess anyway that's um, pretty much going to be it for now um, thank you very much for watching I know this was a pretty longer stream it's not as long as some people are used to but it was good to finally finish the main game and have some fun looking at the uh, footage and concept stuff, which is always nice. Anyway, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll uh, be catching you in the next one. Until then, ciao for now.